Selamat bergabung pada acara webinar Optimizing the Role of the Peer Reviewer in Open Journal Systems. Kolaborasi antara relawan jurnal Indonesia dengan Public Knowledge Project dalam rangka menyemarakan Open Access Week 2024. Webinar ini bertujuan untuk menjelaskan proses peer review yang transparan dan efisien bagi para jurnal manager, editor, dan juga tentunya bagi para reviewer. Good evening to our presenters from the other side of the world. Welcome to the webinar on optimizing the role on of the peer review in open journal systems as a part of uh, the Open Access Week 2024. Untuk memulai acara, mari kita menyanyikan lagu Kebangsaan Indonesia Raya diikuti dengan Mars Relawan Jurnal Indonesia di Indonesia Jurnal Indonesia. Yeah. 
Sekarang mari kita dengarkan dari Ketua Relawan Indonesia, Pak Arbain, kami persilakan. Oke, uh, suara saya jelas, Bu? Jelas, Pak. Silahkan. Oke, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Om Swastiastu. Nama budaya, salam kebajikan. Uh, I want to start by welcoming our speakers, Miss Kate uh, Satterwood, uh, Patricia Mangahis from the Public Knowledge Project PKP. Thank you so much for joining us today. Your presence means a lot to us, and we are excited to learn from you about optimizing uh, role of Uh, peer reviewers in open journal system. I would also like to give a special welcome to Professor John Wilinski, the founder of PKP. Good morning, uh, Professor John Wilinski. Your work in uh, promoting open access knowledge has made big impact around the world, especially in Indonesia. We are honored to have you with us today in Zoom. Uh, I'd also like to thank to our moderator, Ibu Maria, for guiding today today's discussion. Your role uh, is crucial in making this event a success. Uh, now I move to our own language. <laughs> uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, uh, yang saya hormati Wakil Ketua Pengurus Pusat Relawan Jurnal Indonesia ada Bapak Muhammad Ilham Bahtiar, Pak Andista, dan uh, para pemateri kita pada pagi hari ini ada Pak Dwi Fajar Saputra, Pak Jamil, Pak Jamiludin Usman yang akan menyampaikan terkait dengan um, LSP, Lembaga Sertifikasi yang akan segera kita launching ya, bersama dengan RJI Academy yang akan disampaikan juga oleh Pak Jamil, Jamiludin Usman. Saya ingin sampaikan kepada kawan-kawan bahwa RJI terus berkomitmen untuk membantu peningkatan kualitas jurnal yang ada di Indonesia. Saat ini kami telah bekerja sama dengan beberapa uh, pihak baik dalam negeri maupun luar negeri uh, seperti PKP dan uh, Orkid dan uh, Crossref. Bapak Ibu, uh, kami memiliki layanan-layanan yang bisa Bapak Ibu gunakan. Dan tentunya akan uh, Bapak Ibu bisa mengunjungi website RJI. Kami punya uh, beberapa pilihan yang bisa Bapak Ibu gunakan untuk melakukan kegiatan-kegiatan yang sifatnya uh, terkait dengan tata kelola jurnal. Kami juga memiliki, memiliki perwakilan hampir di setiap provinsi yang ada di Indonesia. Jadi kami sangat terbuka untuk melaksanakan event dan kami kita dapat melaksanakan kerjasama. Uh, pada pagi hari ini, Bapak Ibu, uh, kegiatan ini sangat penting ya, karena optimizing the role of the peer reviewers in OJS ini sudah sinergi dengan kebijakan terkait dengan akreditasi jurnal. Saya harapkan kegiatan ini dapat membantu mem memaksimalkan tata kelola jurnal kita menjadi lebih baik. Perlu kita ketahui bahwa peran peer reviewer ini baik jumlah orangnya maupun kualitas naskah ini akan menentukan berapa besar poin kita mungkin nanti di Arjuna secara teknis Bapak-Ibu. Namun lebih daripada itu tentunya naskah-naskah yang terbit di jurnal kita akan menjadi lebih baik dan tentunya berkualitas sehingga dapat berdampak pada kehidupan nyata. Akhir kata saya ucapkan sekali lagi terima kasih kepada pemateri dan Bapak Ibu yang hadir, uh, I hope uh, everyone uh, finds today's session helpful and inspiring. Uh. Let's work together to create a stronger journal ecosystem in our country. Thank you and enjoy the event. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih.
Pak Dr. Arbain. Now we are moving forward uh, to the welcoming speech of the founder and co-scientific director of Public Knowledge Project, Professor John Wilinski, who is currently a professor at Simon Fraser University and Kosla Family Professor Emeritus at Stanford University. John, now you are connected with almost 150 OJS users in Indonesia more uh, coming to the Zoom. I hope we will have around 250 participants. You will have uh, 10 minutes until past the hour. So this, uh, the floor is yours. I'm muted. Oh, there I am. Okay. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, and thank you very much to everyone who's attending this event. I'm very proud to be here. My name is John Wolinski, and I'm a professor of education. Um, and a whole bunch of years ago, in 1998, I founded the Public Knowledge Project. Um, it was an idea that I had as a teacher, uh, as an educator. It was an idea that I thought could help people discover knowledge in a new way. I was a school teacher who taught children how to read. And the idea that one day they would be able to read research, scholarship, learn what had been discovered, learn what had been explored, and learn what scholarship had revealed was a really important idea to me. So I am so delighted to be working with you and my colleagues in Indonesia, to have Patricia and Kate here working on the question of peer review, and to have Maria, with whom I work very closely in terms of my connections. Thank you, Maria. Uh, in Indonesia. Um, I want to point out that Indonesia is really the center of public knowledge, of the public knowledge project's work. Um, we have roughly uh, 50,000 journals using OJS, but close to half of those are in Indonesia. Indonesian journals are growing faster than any other part of the world. Indonesian journals are growing in size, the number of articles they publish. And the Indonesian journals are publishing in multiple languages, in Bahasa and English. Um, and it is to us a great honor to be able to collaborate with you. So I also want to add to this that the point about peer review, the optimizing the role of peer review. Now, I have been a researcher for a very long time, about 40 years. And everything I've learned about how to do research, I want to say, comes from people peer reviewing my work. So many times I have learned from the comments, criticisms, they hurt me at first, but then I get used to them. No, I don't get used to them, I learn from them. And over the years I have over a hundred articles published and every one of those articles benefited from peer review, more than one peer reviewer. Now I was unhappy when I first got some of the peer reviews, but after and now I realize this is such an important role. So while some people think peer review is just a yes, sorry, yes, excuse me, or a no, it's not. It's about helping other researchers improve the quality of their contribution. We want to be in a position to make research better. And Indonesia is in a position to make a huge global contribution in this regard, in terms of research. Thousands and thousands of articles, perhaps two or 300,000 articles a year. And each of those articles will be improved by peer review. Now, I've reviewed a lot of articles over my years. And the review process teaches you what other people are doing. You try to be helpful and supportive of those you review. You try to give them a benefit of what you understand, but the care that you put into that peer review is some of the purest labor, some of the, the most altruistic, that is completely from the heart because you are invisible or anonymous, although less so today, there's more open peer review and you are doing it to the benefit of other researchers. They are learning from you and the work that they do will be better. So I'm very delighted that you are focusing on peer review. I'm very interested in the ways in which you go about that. And I'm very hopeful that OJS is supporting you. Is supporting you in terms of, of that 
strict peer review process. Now, it looks like my time is done and, and I'm back in my little square as part of the great assembly. That's okay. Um, I am delighted to turn this back to you. Um, and again, I just want to welcome you from the Public Knowledge Project. We're located around the world, but our main center is at Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, British Columbia, um, and Canada. And we are just yeah thrilled to be able to work with you in this way. And we look forward, thanks to Maria's work and others, to be able to continue working with you. Have a terrific workshop, and may you be blessed for all of the work you're doing in peer review and publishing and sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, bahwa beliau senang ikut berpartisipasi dalam acara ini. Beliau mengatakan beliau mendirikan PKP pada tahun 1998, sementara Open Journal System dirilis sesudahnya yaitu pada tahun 2002, 2002 yang hingga saat ini merupakan platform penerbitan jurnal yang digunakan paling banyak di dunia dan Indonesia dengan bangga kita bilang adalah pengguna terbesarnya pada tahun 2020 hingga 2022 peningkatan jumlah jurnal dari 13.500 ke 19.997 dari 50.000 yang sudah disebutkan John tadi jumlah artikel meningkat dari 280.000 ke 510.000 dan uh, meningkatnya dari 23 ke 26 rata-rata artikel per jurnal uh, John juga mengatakan bahwa dia sudah me menjadi researcher selama lebih dari 40 tahun dan uh, beliau banyak sekali menerima peer review yang menurut dia itu posisi yang sangat krusial. Kadang-kadang kata-katanya menyakitkan karena anonimus, tapi itulah yang membentuk artikel menjadi jauh lebih baik sehingga uh, kita akan uh, artikel kita akan mempunyai impact yang bagus terhadap perkembangan riset di bidangnya. Beliau saat ini sedang mengembangkan yang namanya publication facts label. Tadi mungkin uh, lupa dimention oleh John, publication facts label ini adalah seperti nutrition fact, yang mana salah satu isinya juga ada tentang peer review. Nanti um, mungkin uh, jika ada kesempatan lain, uh, kita akan menyampaikan mengenai publication facts label ini. Once again, thank you so much, John. Yeah. Oke, okay. Bapak dan Ibu dapat kami informasikan bahwa akan terdapat lima hadiah menarik bagi para peserta yang memposting acara webinar ini di website institusinya sebelum tanggal 30 Oktober 2024 dengan menyebutkan tema webinar, nama presenter, rangkuman materi presentasi, dan minimal dua foto pada postingan tersebut. Sebelum memulai acara, kami mohon para peserta untuk dapat menyalakan kameranya untuk foto bersama. Before we begin, please turn your camera on for the picture taking session. Panitia, kami mohon bantuannya. Tolong dikasih aba-aba kalau sudah. Ya. Mbak Ella. Ya, uh, ini kita mulai. Satu, dua, tiga. Ini ada beberapa slide. Ya, sudah. Terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih Mbak Ella. Oke. Bapak Ibu peserta webinar, seperti kita ketahui bahwa acara ini merupakan kolaborasi antara Relawan Jurnal Indonesia dan Public Knowledge Project. Salah satu bentuk kerjasama yang baru kami rintis adalah RJI Academy dan PKP School. Sekarang mari kita dengarkan penjelasan mengenai RJI Academy oleh Koordinator Divisi RJI Academy, Bapak Jamiludin Usman. Kepada Pak Jamil kami persilakan. Baik, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, yang saya hormati Ketua Relawan Jurnal Indonesia, kemudian uh, Wakil Ketua 
dan rekan-rekan sekalian yang hadir di sini, kemudian the speaker from BKP, Alhamdulillah kita bisa berkumpul bersama untuk uh, menyimak materi pada pagi hari ini. Uh, ada satu poin yang akan kami sampaikan di satu sesi acara sebelum acara inti terkait tentang review ya tentang optimalisasi kita mereview artikel di jurnal ada selipan acara yang yaitu mengenalkan tentang kerjasama RCI Akademi bersama PKP begitu nah nanti uh, ada juga RCI akan mengenalkan terkait tentang lembaga sertifikasi profesi terkait pengelolaan jurnal yang akan disampaikan oleh Pak Dudu setelah saya. Uh, karena saya diberi waktu cuma sekitar 7 menit, jadi saya segerakan saja untuk dimulai. Uh, RCI Akademi ini merupakan satu bagian dari salah satu divisi, divisinya RCI. RCI itu ada ada banyak divisi, diantaranya adalah fokus di supervisi, kemudian ada yang fokus di pelatihan, begitu. Ada yang fokus di sertifikasi, ada yang fokus di pendampingan dan lain sebagainya, begitu. Uh, selanjutnya, sebenarnya embrionya embrio RCI Academy ini sudah dirilis sekitar tahun 2018 begitu di Surabaya dan ini sudah di launch dulu namanya sekolah jurnal gitu. kemudian RCI Akademi itu apa RCI Akademi itu eh, sebuah portal pembelajaran online jadi kalau bapak ibu para peserta yang hadir di sini itu ingin mendalami terkait tentang pengelolaan jurnal ya tempatnya ada di RCI Akademi salah satu fasilitas yang dimiliki RCI adalah RCI Akademi yang dirancang untuk meningkatkan kualitas publikasi ini. Nah, fasilitas ini diperuntukkan bagi anggota RCI dan masyarakat umum, ya masyarakat pengelola jurnal seperti bapak ibu yang hadir di sini. Kemudian ini portalnya mungkin hari ini masih belum bisa diakses karena sedang maintenance. Terus kemudian materinya ada empat pilar publikasi, jadi fokus di empat ini empat pilar pengelolaan jurnal, pengelolaan publikasi, yaitu registrasi, ada validasi, pengarsipan, dan diseminasi. Dan masing-masing materi itu ada level-levelnya, ada beginner, intermediate, advanced, dan expert. Nah ini, ini kurikulumnya, kurikulumnya pun juga sudah sudah didaftarkan di ini ya hak kekayaan intelektual di Indonesia. Jadi kita sudah pegang hak ciptanya begitu, diregistrasikan juga. sudah sudah selesai. Kemudian kita juga punya fasilitator yang ada di dalam di situ yang nanti akan bertugas untuk uh, mengobservasi begitu. Setelah bapak ibu belajar di RCI Academy, ya di akhir nanti akan ada yang mengobservasi sejauh mana uh, bapak ibu itu berhasil menyelesaikan uh, skema yang ada di situ. Ada empat skema yang yang bisa diselesaikan. Tapi untuk nanti bagian kerjasama dengan PKP ini cukup menyelesaikan satu skema saja, begitu. Nah, sistem belajarnya tidak jauh beda dengan PKP School. PKP School ntar lagi akan disampaikan setelah saya. Jadi sistem model belajarnya sebenarnya juga mirip-mirip. Jadi nanti peserta itu mempelajari video di situ, ada modul, kemudian mengerjakan kuisnya. Nah, Kemudian kalau ditarget bisa ditarget itu per skema itu bisa ini empat bulan, tapi bisa lebih cepat. Saya kira kalau bapak ibu sudah eh, sekarang ini posisinya adalah pengelola jurnal yang apalagi yang sudah lama begitu nggak sampai empat bulan paling sudah selesai satu minggu dua hari tiga hari itu bisa menyelesaikan begitu. Nah, di situ juga ada forum diskusi di via online, kemudian juga disediakan tempat praktiknya. Ketika di situ materinya menyangkut hal-hal yang bersifat praktik, kita juga menyediakan tempat latihannya untuk dioprek-oprek begitu. Nah, kemudian ada sistem asesmen yang tadi difasilitasi oleh para fasilitator. Nah, maka kemudian jika peserta dinyatakan 
selesai lulus maka ini apa dinyatakan lulus akan mendapatkan sertifikat per skema skema jadi tidak harus semua nah tahapan sistem yang kita buat modelnya seperti ini jadi peserta mendaftarkan diri akunnya di RCI Academy itu di LMS nya itu kemudian mempelajari saya bilang tadi kalau Bapak Ibu sudah misalnya expert di bidang pengelolaan jurnal ya saya kira enggak terlalu lama lah kemudian mendaftar ujian atau observasi menempuh observasi kemudian jika para fasilitator menyatakan sama harus ngulang ya mengulang begitu tapi kalau sudah lanjut lanjut maka kemudian akan mendapatkan sertifikat kompetensi dari RCI Academy. Nah, setelah mendapatkan sertifikat kompetensi ini, nah, maka kemudian akan profilnya akan muncul di member relawan jurnal. Jadi di, di, di portal member itu akan muncul keterangan-keterangan bahwa dia sudah menempuh skema ini, skema registrasi, skema validasi, diseminasi begitu. Nah. Sejak dulu kita sudah merancang, kemudian member-member RCI itu terutama yang sudah mengikuti pelatihan di RCI Academy itu nanti akan disertifikasi begitu di melalui LSP-nya miliknya RCI ya nanti akan dikenalkan oleh Pak Dudu lah saya tidak menjelaskan di sini. Kemudian yang berikutnya adalah ini beberapa waktu yang lalu. RCI dan bersama PKP membuat semacam MOU, semacam perjanjian kerjasama begitu. Bapak Ibu bisa mengecek di websitenya PKP langsung bahwa RCI itu memfasilitasi pelatihan selain di RCI Academy bisa belajar juga di PKP School. Gitu. Artinya kedua-duanya harus dilewati. Gitu. Nah, skemanya bagaimana tahapannya? Nah, setelah Bapak Ibu misalnya nanti belajar di RC Academy lulus dinyatakan selesai. Nah, maka kemudian tim teknis RC Academy akan menyusun daftar peserta yang eligible untuk kemudian mengikuti uh, pembelajaran di PKP School begitu. Nanti kami akan mengirim data ke PKP School bahwa nama-nama berikut ini adalah adalah peserta yang eligible untuk kemudian mengikuti kegiatan belajar di PKP School yang ini merupakan program kerjasama antara RCI Academy dan PKP School. Nah, maka kemudian kalau setelah peserta menyelesaikan kegiatannya di PKP School, maka sertifikat yang dari PKP School itu akan dikeluarkan dan eh, ini apa? Di situ nanti akan ada logo kedua lembaga begitu. Kemarin dirancang begitu. Eh, ada logonya PKP dan ada logonya RCI. Nah ini, coba saya Bapak Ibu bisa nanti bisa ngecek di di sini nanti saya share nanti saya share di chat untuk linknya bisa baca keterangannya seperti apa. Kalau eh, sertifikasi via langsung ya langsung via PKP itu nanti bayarnya berapa begitu. Tapi kalau di kalau di sini munculnya kan 99 dolar begitu. Nanti dihitung sendiri rupiahnya berapa. Nah, tetapi ketika Bapak Ibu mengikuti program ini, nah, biayanya hanya 200.000 rupiah. Nah, selisihnya eh, cukup cukup banyak Bapak Ibu. Kemudian intinya adalah kalau mau ikut program ini, Bapak Ibu menyelesaikan skema registrasi. Ya, materinya ada di bawah ini. Nah, ada beginner, intermediate, advanced, dan expert. Hal-hal terkait registrasi itu, saya kira kalau Bapak Ibu hari ini sudah apalagi sudah lama jadi pengelola jurnal, nah, saya kira cukup cukup gampang. Oke, saya kira itu yang dapat kami sampaikan. Nanti akan dilanjutkan dengan penjelasan dari PKP kemudian terkait tentang LSP yang akan disampaikan oleh Pak Dudu. Demikian, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak Pak Jamil atas penjelasannya mengenai RJI Academy. 
Now let us hear the introduction of the PKP school which will be delivered by Kate Satelworth, PKP's term community engagement and outreach librarian. Kate, the time is yours. Thank you, Maria, and thanks everyone very much for having me. Um, it's wonderful to be here. I will go ahead and share my screen um, so that I can do a brief demonstration in PKP School. So PKP School is a collection of online courses um, which are open and free for anyone to take um, that cover a number of topics around using PKP software, open journal systems, and on scholarly publishing um, topics in general to help folks um, strengthen and improve the quality of the work they're doing in, in journal publication. Um, so we have 17 courses in total. Um, our earliest courses launched in 2013. And our, I'll just take you through the site so I can show you um, a little bit of what we have. The first thing I'll point out is that you do need to register to access our courses. Um, it's a free account. And once you have your account, you'll have access to all of the courses available. The reason we require registration instead of just making the courses open is so that we can offer the certificates that we just heard about. So um, we are able to see when someone has completed a course and um, done the work of um, reading the modules and commenting in the discussions, and then we can issue that certificate. So that's the reason we have the, the registration there. Um, once you've registered, as I said, you'll see be able to access the courses. Um, our two most popular courses are around learning OJS. The first is setting up a journal, so configuring the settings in a journal. And the second is the editorial workflow. So that shows the submission process, peer review, copy editing, and through to production and publishing an issue. Um, so I'll take us into one of these courses so I can show you a little bit of what you'll get as you register and come in here. So um, you'll see the course is broken down into modules. Um, you can click on a module and you'll see something like this in each of them. So usually some objectives, a video, um, perhaps some further readings, an activity, and possibly a discussion as well. So the, and these are the pieces you would need to complete uh, to show that you've completed to get the certificate. Um, the videos are quite short, um, usually just a few minutes each, and they just show one piece of um, setting up your journal. So each module will have a separate video showing um, how to do something uh, as you work through the course. So something I'll point out in this course in particular um, in setting up a journal in OJS, you have access to a free learning journal in OJS as you're moving through the course. So um, when you reach this module, you just follow the steps. Um, you send my colleague Andrea an email um, requesting a journal and she'll send you a link to your to your own journal site. So you'll get something um, like this. So this is our, our collection of PKP school journals. So you'll, you'll see a journal with your name on it and you'll be able to go in there and actually follow, log in as a journal manager in the journal and then follow all the steps for setting up the site that you're learning in the course. Um, so that's something that we, we're glad we're able to offer. You'll have the journal for two years um, from when you get it. So our other course, uh, as I mentioned, um, Editorial Workflow in OJS 3.3 is our other um, most popular course right now. But we do have these for older versions of OJS. I know that some folks are not using OJS 3.3 yet. So we also have um, the courses for versions 3.1 and version 2. Um, other courses that we have um, are on the publishing workflow. So we have a course for journal editors that are learning um, the steps for editing a journal, a course for peer reviewers, uh, which will cover some of the content, of course, that we'll discuss today, and a course on writing for publication. Um, all three of these courses are undergoing improvements right now. So we hope to have more up-to-date content for you in 2025, um, but these are here for you to use. Um, and as I say, becoming a reviewer, we'll, I'll just quickly show you this one. Um, it's, it's quite short. It has just seven modules um, and it covers the basics of, for, of what a peer reviewer should know. Um, but we, as I say, we will update this course. And in fact, some of the content that I'm presenting on today will go into updating the course soon. Um, the um, Becoming an Editor course is slightly longer um, and it's undergoing improvements right now. Um, so each module has a number of units inside it. So this one has 10 units. 
Um, so this is more of a time commitment to complete this course. Um, but all of these courses do have the, the certificate option attached to them as well. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to share for PKP School. I'm happy to take questions about this as well. Okay, thank you so much, Kate, for the brief explanation. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, tadi yang sudah disampaikan oleh uh, Kate, bahwa PKP School dapat diakses dari uh, pkpschool.sfu.ca. Uh, uh, PKP School mempunyai 17 kursus gratis. Uh, yang paling terkenal adalah uh, Learning OJS dan Editorial Workflow. Ini sangat bagus bagi uh, para pengolah jurnal yang baru belajar mengenal jurnal. Jadi yang kita lakukan tinggal daftar, nonton videonya, baca modul, beri komentar. Itu semua gratis. Tetapi kalau mau sertifikat, seperti tadi yang disa sudah disampaikan oleh Pak Jamil, bayar 200 ribu, khusus pengguna dari Indonesia, dan sudah harus lulus dalam tanda kutip dari RJI Academy. Begitu kira-kira yang dapat saya sampaikan mengenai PKP School. Once again, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, kita akan memasuki acara berikutnya, yaitu mengenai pengenalan lembaga sertifikasi profesi pustaka ilmiah elektronik yang akan disampaikan oleh Direktur Utama LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik, Bapak Dwi Fajar Saputra. Kepada Pak Dudu, kami persilakan. Thank you, Bu Maria. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, Bapak Ibu. Apakah suara saya terdengar dengan jelas? Jelas, Pak Dudu. Oke. Okay. Slide saya sudah oke, okay, Bu? Sudah. Sip. Baik, izin memulai. Oke, okay. uh, jadi uh, Alhamdulillah Bapak-Ibu untuk LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik kami sudah uh, diberikan izin ya oleh pihak BNSP Badan Sertifikasi Profesi di Indonesia yang memang melakukan uh, koordinator ya uh, bertindak sebagai koordinator dalam hal lembaga sertifikasi profesi yang ada di Indonesia. Nah dalam hal ini uh, kami ingin melakukan uh, beberapa uh, promosi ya terkait kehadiran dari LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Nah, nanti kami harapkan Bapak Ibu bisa uh, berkomunikasi. Kemudian mungkin kita bisa juga bekerja sama terkait hal-hal mengenai eh, kontribusi ya terhadap pengembangan unit kompetensi dan lain sebagainya yang ada di Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Eh, sebelumnya saya memperkenalkan diri terlebih dahulu. Saya Dwi Fajar Saputra, selaku Direktur Utama dari LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Kami sudah memiliki website yang bisa diakses oleh Bapak Ibu di https lspia.com dan di sini nanti pastinya akan menyesuaikan ya kondisi sekarang masih sekedar landing page terlebih dahulu nanti beragam informasi beragam aktivitas kami coba untuk melakukan update di sana kemudian di tahap Pengembangan ini, saya masuk terlebih dahulu ya, dari sisi eh, latar belakang. Jadi, sejak 2017, eh, melalui perkumpulan relawan jurnal Indonesia, kami melihat ada salah satu entitas yang bisa dilakukan pengembangan dari sisi eh, ekosistem yang ada di dalam pengelolaan jurnal ilmiah yang ada di Indonesia. Tadi seperti yang disampaikan oleh Prof. John berkaitan sama eh, eksistensi dari PKP, kemudian tadi ada updating dari PKP School dan juga RJ Academy dari Pak Jamil. Nah, di sini kami mau mencoba masuk dari sisi bidang unit kompetensinya. Jadi fokusnya adalah bisa menjaga standar dari kompetensi yang ada di dalam SDM pengelolaan jurnal khususnya di Indonesia. Nah, di dalam uh, eksistensi ini ada beberapa bagian ya, yang memang nantinya bisa juga menjadi uh, bahan untuk bisa kita diskusikan. Antara lain misalnya uh, 
capaian-capaian yang ada di dalam kelembagaan, kewajiban terkait syarat lulus, kemudian eh, perkembangan ya dari dunia publikasi ilmiah yang ada di Indonesia sudah sangat masuk ke beberapa elemen yang ada di bidang akademis, kelembagaan dan lain sebagainya. Nah dari dasar itulah kami coba masuk untuk bisa membuat beberapa eh, kajian terkait pentingnya lembaga sertifikasi profesi. Kemudian potensi-potensi kerjasama yang nanti bisa kita eh, kerjasamakan Bapak Ibu. Yang pertama kami menyediakan eh, tempat uji kompetensi tersendiri di dalam sekretariat LSP Pustaka eh, Ilmiah Elektronik eh, berkedudukan di Yogyakarta di sekretariat dari RJI dan kemarin sudah melakukan full assessment dan sudah disetujui dan dari sana kami juga nanti bisa mengundang Bapak Ibu untuk bisa melaksanakan kegiatan eh, kerjasama ini ya dalam bentuk uji sertifikasi kemudian pelatihan dan lain sebagainya kemudian yang kedua berkaitan sama pelaksanaan sertifikasi skema mandiri baik misalnya bapak ibu sebagai pimpinan ataupun koordinator ya atau mungkin memiliki ide untuk pengembangan dari segi LSP atau mungkin dari segi sertifikasi SDM bapak ibu itu bisa melaksanakan pelaksanaan sertifikasi secara mandiri di lembaga dan juga perguruan tinggi bapak ibu jadi nanti bapak ibu sebagai tempat uji kompetensinya nah ini berkaitan sama yang poin yang ketiga ya jadi bapak ibu menyediakan tempat Kemudian Bapak-Ibu bertindak sebagai pihak eksternal dan kami nanti yang akan menyediakan eh, asesornya, kemudian menyediakan skemanya, kemudian eh, menyediakan juga dari segi uji eh, pendukung dari proses sertifikasi. Dan kami juga terbuka untuk bisa melakukan kajian bersama Bapak-Ibu terkait peningkatan indeks standar biaya masukan pengelola jurnal yang ada di Indonesia. Dan ini sudah menjadi eh, bahan diskusi sebelumnya. Kami mengundang eh, dalam bentuk focus group discussion dengan beragam stakeholder, antara lain ada dari eh, perwakilan kementerian, kemudian ada dari perwakilan asosiasi dosen, lalu juga perwakilan dari perkumpulan pengelola jurnal, dan lain sebagainya. Dan dari kondisi tersebut itu ada eh, hal yang nantinya sudah disepakati ya terkait sebuah kajian bersama nanti harapannya ini menjadi satu bahan untuk bisa kita tingkatkan kembali eh, beragam kebutuhan di dalam pengelolaan jurnal yang ada di Indonesia antara lain misalnya eh, peningkatan dari segi pembiayaan standar biaya masukan kalau yang kondisi sekarang mungkin masih menggunakan skema-skema uh, yang sebelumnya ya. Nah sekarang kita coba sesuaikan. Karena pada dasarnya untuk yang jurnal cetak dan jurnal elektronik pastinya berbeda ya Bapak-Ibu. Nah dari situ memerlukan kajian untuk bisa kita uh, sampaikan ke kementerian terkait. Dan berikutnya, ini visi misi dari kami Bapak-Ibu. Ini menjadi lembaga sertifikasi profesi yang unggul, profesional, dan kompeten dalam bidang perpustakaan dan terbitan ilmiah dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Kenapa lingkupnya adalah perpustakaan? Karena kami menggunakan SKKNI perpustakaan. Di dalam penentuan sebuah LSP, itu harus ada satu rujukannya. Nah, kondisinya untuk saat ini kami masih menggunakan yang di bidang perpustakaan. Nah, ke depannya kita bisa bikin sendiri Bapak Ibu untuk SKKNI yang khusus jurnal ilmiah elektronik. Nah, ini menjadi salah satu visi misi kami untuk bisa mengembangkan LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Nah, ini merupakan struktur dari LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Saya dibantu dengan beberapa rekan, misalnya seperti Pak Jamil selaku manajer mutu ya, kemudian Bu Zulitiana selaku direktur sertifikasi, lalu Mas Gali selaku direktur administrasi dan 
Mbak Fureida ya, selaku Direktur Keuangan. Jadi ini merupakan struktur organisasi dari LSP kami yang kami harapkan adanya kerjasama nanti terkait pengembangan dan juga eh, hal-hal lain ya, yang nanti yang memungkinkan untuk bisa kita kerjasamakan. Dan berikutnya, ini sekilas dari apa yang sudah kami dapatkan, Bapak-Ibu. Berdasarkan cap Ketua BNSP nomor 231 BNSP garis miring eh, 9 2024 dengan skema namanya sertifikasi klaster pengelolaan jurnal elektronik. Jadi kami sudah spesifik ya Bapak-Ibu berkaitan sama jurnal elektronik. Makanya kami sandingkan dengan konsep-konsep lain seperti misalnya RJI Academy dan eh, bersamaan juga dengan PKP School. Nah dari eh, konteks yang nanti bisa diharapkan, jadi adanya pelatihan dan juga nanti adanya eh, satu kegiatan terkait sertifikasi. Jadi nanti bentuknya adalah untuk yang eh, kondisi saat ini, ini kami akan coba sesuaikan dengan adanya RJ Academy. Jadi ada eh, semacam pelatihan yang dilakukan, Kemudian nanti kita akan bentuk juga selanjutnya ya untuk kebutuhan sertifikat itu bisa disesuaikan dengan adanya sertifikasi klaster pengelolaan jurnal elektronik. Nah dari sana uh, unsur yang ada di uh, legalitasnya kami sudah mendapatkan akta notaris ya uh, yang memang menjadi perwakilannya adalah perkumpulan relawan jurnal Indonesia dari sisi perwakilan industri. Nah ini merupakan legal standing dari kami yang nantinya eh, menjadi informasi ya buat Bapak Ibu untuk bisa kita kerjasamakan. Dan berikutnya ini merupakan skema-skema yang ada di dalam LSP Pustaka Ilmu Elektronik. Jadi ada dua Bapak Ibu. Yang pertama penerapan IT untuk artikel ilmiah. Kemudian yang kedua pengelolaan jurnal elektronik. Jadi bagaimana nanti Bapak Ibu bisa memahami hal-hal dalam melakukan proses layout, Kemudian bagaimana Bapak-Ibu memahami pengelolaan dari dasar-dasar, kemudian peer review, kemudian bisa menentukan dari sisi editor dan reviewer di dalam pengelolaan sebuah jurnal elektronik. Nah, dua hal ini yang menjadi dasar dalam penentuan skema LSP Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Kedepannya ini bisa akan berkembang, karena tidak serta-merta hanya skema. Bahkan bisa juga kita kembangkan satu kategori ya, jadi tidak menggunakan skema klaster, tapi juga skema okupasi. Nah dari sana juga mungkin ada kajian-kajian yang nanti bisa kita diskusikan. Dan berikutnya ini hasil kemarin setelah full assessment dan kami tunggu kehadiran Bapak Ibu di sekretariat kami di Yogyakarta dan kedepannya mohon bisa dipantau terus dari sisi eh, ketersediaan baik aktivitas, kegiatan di eh, website kami, dan bisa juga untuk kontak ya ke tim dari admin, dari Relawan Jurnal Indonesia, untuk bisa eh, Bapak-Ibu eh, ketika ingin bergabung di dalam proses sertifikasi, melakukan kajian, mengundang untuk kebutuhan eh, TUK di tempat Bapak-Ibu, dan lain sebagainya. Jadi demikian eh, promosi yang bisa kami sampaikan, kiranya bisa diterima dengan baik. Dan terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak Pak Dwi Fajar Saputra atas pengenalannya terhadap Lembaga Sertifikasi Profesi Pustaka Ilmiah Elektronik. Baik Bapak dan Ibu peserta webinar yang berbahagia, peer review yang baik, tadi seperti tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh John Wilinski, dapat menjamin kualitas dan integritas dari sebuah publikasi ilmiah dengan dilakukan oleh ahli di bidangnya untuk mengevaluasi sebuah riset yang akurat dan original, dapat memberikan masukan yang membangun, dan tentu saja selalu mengedepankan etika publikasi. Sekarang kita akan masuk ke acara utama yaitu webinar Optimizing the Role of the Peer Reviewer in Open Journal Systems. Materi akan dibawakan dalam bahasa Inggris, tetapi akan saya terjemahkan secara singkat setelah beberapa slide agar lebih mudah dimengerti oleh Bapak dan Ibu sekalian.
Pertanyaan dapat diajukan via kolom chat dalam bahasa Indonesia ataupun bahasa Inggris dengan menyebutkan nama dan institusinya. Lima pertanyaan tercepat akan mendapatkan door prize menarik. Pada saat sesi nanti dari pertanyaan dari Kip mengenai uh, diskusi meng, uh, diskusi dari peer reviewer. Nah itu nanti bisa juga kita saling diskusi di kolom chat. Sekarang uh, kita akan mendengarkan webinar optimizing the role of the peer reviewer in open journal system. Now we will move to the main agenda, which is the webinar on optimizing the role of the peer reviewer in open journal systems. There will be two sessions. The first session will be delivered by Kate Satterworth, PKP Terms Community Engagement and Outreach Librarian. Uh, Kate holds a Master in Library and Information Studies from the University of British Columbia and has been working with PKP since 2018. Uh, the Patricia Mangahis, PKP's Client Services Manager, will deliver the presentation in the second session. Uh, she holds a Master of Publishing from Simon Fraser University and joined PKP since 2019. Kate, Kate, the time is yours for the next 30 minutes and then followed by Patricia for another 30 minutes. The floor is much. yours. Thank you, Maria. Okay, I will... Go ahead and share my screen again. And so hopefully you are able to see my slides. Yes, clearly. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, yes, thank you, Maria, for the introduction. Um, as Maria said, um, Patricia and I will be sharing the presentation and speaking to you on optimizing the role of the peer reviewer. And Patricia will be going into details um, of the interface in OJS and what that looks like for peer reviewers. Um, for my section, I'll be looking at a few different things. Um, characteristics of, of good reviews, what it means to write a peer review. I'll be covering um, some of what John said in his introduction around why we do peer review and what we hope to to accomplish um, and then i'll also talk about some best practices for peer review and i'll be speaking from the context that i'm familiar with in uh, north america but i'm very interested in hearing about practices and peer review um, and some of the challenges that you might be facing um, where you are as well so i'm hoping we can incorporate some of that into the conversation today um, so first, a little bit about the role of peer review, um, and again, this will echo some of what John Walensky said in the beginning today. Um, I wanted to start just by positioning peer review in the context of the work that we do as journal editors. So um, just thinking through the process as it usually looks for journals, an author will, of course, come and submit their manuscript to a journal. Usually. The first person to see uh, the manuscript after submission would be a journal editor, perhaps a section editor, and they'll do an initial check um, to decide if the submission will move forward, uh, if it will go to peer review, or perhaps if it will be published without peer review, or if it will be rejected. Um, the editor will then be responsible for assigning peer reviewers to the submission. Um, usually, as John said, a few, several, maybe th two or three different reviewers for a single manuscript, and those reviewers will be carefully selected based on um, their expertise. And the reviewers will then um, write their feedback and their comments for the author, and we'll go into some detail of what that looks like in a moment. The reviewers will then correspond back to the editor, usually, rather than directly to the author. So they will um, send their feedback to the editor and the editor will again have the opportunity to make a decision on the submission on whether it will move forward to be published or if it will be rejected. And if it is being moved forward, um, they will decide um, what kind of feedback the author should get to revise the submission. So they'll forward their reviewer comments and maybe make some of their own suggestions um, and decide if the submission will need revisions to then be published or perhaps revisions to be resubmitted and go back through another round of peer review. Um, so this process is usually the longest, the piece that takes the most amount of time, it'll take the longest in the whole process um, because you're waiting for comments from peer reviewers and then the editor needs to make their decision and review the feedback and things like that. And we'll look at what this whole process looks like in, in OJS when, when Patricia speaks in a moment as well. Um, but once the peer review process is done and the author has submitted their revised manuscript, 
um, then it will usually go on to copy editing and layout editing. So it's formatted for the issue. Um, then the article will be assigned to an issue and then eventually published um, in the journal. So a little bit about the role of a peer reviewer. So this is just a definition from the dictionary, but it says it's a process by which something proposed as for research or publication is evaluated by a group of experts in the appropriate field. And I wanted to pause here to um, just take a moment to think about the, the use of the word expert in this context um, and the fact that who is considered an expert on a subject is really up to um, to you or as a, as a journal editor, it's up to um, the person running the journal and selecting the reviewers to decide um, what we mean by an expert. So um, this doesn't necessarily have to be scholars with the most experience or the most expertise. Early career scholars are, have been known to give um, peer reviews that are just as high quality or even better than reviews from more senior scholars. Um, so just to keep in mind that you don't always need to approach the most advanced people in the field. Um, you're just looking for someone with a certain level of expertise who has some other qualities, like they are reliable um, and they have a good understanding of the ethics and we'll cover some of those in the presentation as well. Um, so the peer reviewer in, in the publishing process has two main roles. The first, or just they're not in any particular order, but one of the roles is to make recommendations to the editor on whether or not the work should be published. So one of the steps that you'll take, and this is built into OJS, um, is to recommend to the editor what should happen next. Um, if it should go back through peer review again, be published the way it is, or um, have revisions done on it before it gets published. And the other important role of the peer reviewer is to provide feedback to the authors with the intention of helping them to revise and improve their work before it gets published. So ultimately, um, the role of the reviewer is to contribute to improving the quality of the work so that the, the version that gets published in the journal is better than the version that was submitted to the journal. Um, and this goes back to a lot of what John said around um, the intention of really supporting the author to put their best work into their publication um, by having some sort of mentorship and guidance from other, ex other experts or people with other types of knowledge um, to help guide that work. Um, and I really like this um, definition. And again, I think this speaks to what John said earlier, that at its best, peer review can and should be an opportunity for scholarly conversation where authors can improve and refine their research and writing. Reviewers feel they are doing a valuable service to their academic communities and they improve their own communication and assessment skills. Oh, sorry, Maria. I will pause on this slide for a moment okay. for you. Oke, okay, thank you, Kate. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu, saya jelaskan sebentar uh, secara ringkas. Uh, Kate sudah menjelaskan mengenai alur publikasi tadi di slide pertama dari bagaimana dari author submit, kemudian editor review. Sama, karena kita menunggu uh, feedback dari beberapa reviewer. Sesudah itu akan dilakukan copy editing dan juga kemudian naskahnya dipublish. Nah, uh, peer review uh, mengambil um, meminjam istilah dari beberapa dictionary bahwa adalah sebuah proses yang diminta untuk sebuah riset atau publikasi dievaluasi oleh sejumlah ahli di bidang ilmu tertentu. Tadi Kate menjelaskan bahwa kalau ah, kita ngomong ahli, tentu saja kita tidak perlu mencari ahli yang uh, misalnya profesor, doktor, tetapi kadang-kadang yang memang orang yang sudah capable dan reliable di bidangnya. Peranan peer review ini dapat untuk memberikan rekomendasi kepada para editor dan juga memberikan feedback yang membangun untuk penulis untuk memperbaiki, memperbaiki naskahnya. Terus kemudian di peer review ini dapat menjadi sebuah percakapan ilmiah di mana para autor dapat memperbaiki risetnya mereka dan juga dari segi tulisannya mereka. Kate, please continue your slide. Thank you, Maria. Uh, okay, let me move forward. So um, the next piece I wanted to cover um, are some best practices to consider in doing peer review. And again, um, acknowledging that I learned these best practices um, in, my, in the context that I work in in North America. So I'm really interested in hearing how practices might differ um, elsewhere as well. Um, so first of all, I wanted to cover some different types of peer review that exist. 
Um, you might encounter these as a journal editor in deciding what type of peer review you'll use for your journal or what type of peer review a particular submission will go through. Um, and if you are working as a peer reviewer, um, you'll notice that when you're invited to review a submission, um, you'll be notified of which, which type of review um, the journal is using, and it might impact um, the steps that you take as a reviewer and what it looks like. So the four types I'll cover are editorial review, single anonymous or reviewer anonymous, double anonymous, also known as double blind, and open review. Um, so I'll just run through each of these briefly, describe them, and share some of the advantages and disadvantages of using each type of review. So in editorial, ed, sorry, editorial review, um, the editor or an editorial team member will be the person to um, make comments on a submission or make a decision on whether the work will move forward. So we saw this in the diagram that I showed in the beginning when a submission comes in and an editor looks at it. Um, sometimes that's the only review that a submission will get depending on the type of work it is. So for example, I think um, uh, book reviews, as someone writes a review on a book, usually that review piece will just be seen by the editor and they'll give feedback and make a decision. Um, but in other cases, this initial desk review is happens before peer review. So the um, journal editor or the section editor will use this first um, reading of the submission to decide whether it will move on to peer review or if it will get rejected um, if it's not suitable for the journal or doesn't meet the standards of the quality the journal is looking for then they might reject it before it goes to peer review. So an advantage of this type of review um, is that it's faster than external the external review where the editor is sending it on to reviewers um, because they can just take care of it themselves and they already have the editor on hand. Um, but it's not as considered as rigorous as external peer review, um, so often a journal will do both. Um, single anonymous review, or um, the kind of review where just the reviewer is anonymous, um, in this type of review, as an author submits to the journal and they don't know the names of the, the people that offer them the, the review, but the reviewers are able to see the names of the author. So the author's name is revealed, but the reviewer name is not. Um, if there are multiple reviewers, the reviewers also don't know the names of the other reviewers. So this type of review is useful in smaller subject areas, or if it's a small field, there's not that many people publishing on a particular topic, um, then it might be difficult to have double anonymous, where the reviewer doesn't know the name of the author, um, simply because there are not enough people working in the field to keep everyone anon anonymized. Um, so it might be obvious who wrote a paper because they would be the only logical expert to have written that paper. So this is where this type of review um, comes in and, and might get used. Um, there are, of course, some um, disadvantages to this type of review. Um, the, we'll get to double anonymous in, in a moment, but the reason that one's upheld as kind of the gold standard sometimes in peer review um, is because that anonymity, keeping the author's name um, anonymous, is thought to help reduce any bias that might come into the process if a reviewer sees the author's name and is influenced by what they know or what they assume about that person and their background, their history, their, their um, expertise, their knowledge. Um, then that might influence the way they review the paper. So that's why we have uh, anonymous as an option. Um, so the disadvantage of this is that there could be bias that comes into the process. Um, someone might uh, make an assumption about the person's gender, their country of origin, um, or something like that that would influence their um, the way they write their review. Um, there is all, there are also other ethical concerns, and we'll get into some ethics um, of peer review later on as well. Um, but that reviewers might um, intentionally delay the process if they are competing um, to publish on a similar topic. So if they're wanting to get their review out there first, um, then they might see this, this submission come in from someone they know um, and then deliberately hold up the process. Um, we hope, of course, this doesn't happen um, in scholarship um, because we're hoping that the peer review process is intended to support one another make scholarship better for the, the benefit of all, um, and so that we're making it open and available and getting it out into the world. So we hope that, that folks aren't taking advantage like this, but this is one of the ethical concerns that exists 
um, in, in peer review. So double anonymous, I already mentioned, this is um, the most common type of peer review. It's, it's sometimes upheld as the gold standard of peer review um, because it's thought to reduce bias by keeping the author and reviewer anonym, anonymous from one another. Um, so we're hoping that the reviewer won't be influenced by what they know about the author um, from knowing who they are. Um, however, there are some downsides to this type of review. Um, and this is being discussed more uh, recently as different types of open review are becoming more common. Um, and so the one of the um, downsides of the du double anonymous type of peer review is that it can give, uh, it can have the effect where reviewers feel like they have a license to be more critical or unkind than they would be if um, the author were to know their name. So um, it's also good to reflect on the fact that just being anonymous alone doesn't eliminate bias. Um, we all bring our worldview and our own perspectives to the process of peer review. Um, and so we always have to be thinking about um, how that's impacting the feedback that we give. Um, sometimes ha having everyone anonymous can make reviewers feel like they can sort of hide behind the fact that the author won't know who they are, so they might be more critical um, and not be as likely to reflect on those biases that they're bringing to the table. So that brings me to open review, which again is getting um, more attention uh, recently as a potential alternative that might start to reduce some of the, the biases um, that are still embedded in, in traditional peer review. Um, so the goal here is to make peer review more transparent. Um, essentially, what we mean here is that um, the, the anonymity is removed, so both the reviewer and the author are known to each other throughout the process. But in practice, open review can mean very many different things. It might mean, for example, that the reviewer's names are published on the article page. So once it's published, you can see who reviewed it. Um, it might mean that the peer reviews themselves are published so that a reader can view the comments that the peer reviewers wrote when they read the paper. Um, it could mean that the peer review reports are published and the author has a chance to respond um, and that all of those pieces are all published together. Uh, it can also be a case where a peer reviewer and an author have a conversation. So they might even have a meeting face to face where they talk through the feedback um, instead of having this uh, anonymous submission going back and forth through the editor. Um, and there's a type of open review called post-publication peer review, which is where the, public, the paper is published quite quickly after the initial editorial check. Um, so it's published the way the author wrote it, but then the work is made open for discussion from the community online. Um, so then all of the review comments are publicly available. So the intention behind this is that it can be more relational and transparent. Um, it can allow the reviewer and author to have more connection. Um, it's intended to help them learn from one another and have more accountability for reviewers. It also is a way for reviewers to get public credit for the time and their work that they're putting in um, to, to improve the submission. Um, the downside of this type of review is that it can be considered less robust in some disciplines where double anonymous is upheld as the, uh, the gold star of peer review. Reviewers may also prefer to work anonymously, so they may find that open review is less desirable. So um, we don't have too much time for a discussion um, in the session. I will. I am going to keep moving forward, but I wanted to pause just for a moment um, for a few questions for you to just consider. Um, we will have time for a Q&A at the end, so maybe we'll bring these questions forward then. Uh, if folks are interested in sharing, or you're welcome to share these thoughts with your um, with your colleagues as well after the session today. Um, but I'm curious if you've heard of open review or post publication review before, if it's something you would consider for your journal and why or why not. So I will go ahead and move on to the next slide and just give you those two to consider. Okay, so I'll cover a few um, reviewer responsibilities, and these are um, useful, I think, both for editors to consider when you're thinking about who to bring on board as a peer reviewer and what types of um, individuals you'd be looking for, um, and also useful for reviewers to understand as they start the process of becoming a peer review reviewer. Um, so 
these guidelines came from um, the Committee on Publication Ethics, or COPE. Um, they have a set of ethical guidelines for peer reviewers. Um, these are really useful, and I've borrowed some content from them for my slides today. I do recommend if you have a chance to look at the guidelines. Um, there's a lot of information there that, that would be helpful. Um, so the first thing, one of the things that the COPE guidance says is that um, peer review is often considered a professional responsibility or something built into the academic profession um, that is somewhat expected of, of folks to contribute to. Um, this is especially true for um, folks who uh, are authors on papers that go through peer review. There's then a bit of an expectation that they will return um, and reciprocate, return the favor by them becoming peer reviewers. Um, themselves. So um, this is something John spoke about too, the sort of give and take, that you benefit from it as an author, peer reviewers help to strengthen your work, and then when you're able, you provide your expertise and mentorship to help another author get their work published and make it better before it gets published. Um, so some responsibilities for reviewers to think about. Um, it's important to be aware of the risk of having a conflict of interest. Reviewers need to disclose or tell their editor about any potential conflicts of interest that they discover. A conflict of interest can be personal, financial, intellectual, professional, political, or religious. So for example, um, in the case where you uh, are doing a review and it's not anonymous, um, if you know the that you've worked closely with the author in any case, like you've worked at the same institution, or perhaps you've been a mentor, a mentee, a close collaborator, or you've held a grant with the author. Um, those would all be examples of conflicts of interest. If the review is anonymous, but you think you know who the author is, that would immediately be a conflict of interest as well. And you would need to let the editor know you may not be able to review the paper because it wouldn't be anonymous. Um, Again, going back to some of the ethics, um, some of the, the things um, to watch out for would be a reviewer that's hoping to gain insight into the paper just to see what someone else is publishing on to get ideas for themselves. If they have no intention of actually completing a, a helpful review, um, that would be a breach of ethics. Um, and another conflict of interest would be if you as an author have a paper that's being prepared for publication that's very similar to one you've been asked to review, then you're really in um, competition in a sense with this colleague. So it would be best for you to step down as a peer reviewer in that case. Um, other responsibilities around timeliness and responsiveness. So just paying attention to deadlines, declining a review if you won't be able to complete it on time. Um, if you do accept a review and then the situation changes and you can't complete it, just be clear with the editor and, and communicate and let them know. Um, it's better to decline a review than to accept it and then not complete it or miss the deadline. And that puts the editor in a difficult position and delays the process. Um, if you do need to decline a review, um, you it's totally uh, perfectly fine for you to suggest other reviewers um, in the field that you uh, think would be good candidates as well. Um, another responsibility is around objectivity. So I spoke a little bit about bias earlier. So just being aware of your own bias, um, trying to be as objective as you can in reviewing someone else's work, um, being fair and honest in your assessment of a submission. Um, and then just having generous intentions. So again, this goes back to what John said, um, that the purpose of peer review is to make a contribution to the field, to improve the quality of the scholarship that we're all working together to publish and make open. Um, your influence, your expertise is making the research stronger. It's confirming the accuracy before it's published. Um, so your goal is really to be supportive of authors and to, and to help the editor have a stronger publication as well. So um, I'm going to cover a few um, guidance, uh, some guidance for reviewers now as well. Um, and so uh, some of this comes from the PKP school co course, um, becoming a reviewer, um, and some of these tips come from the COPE guidelines as well. So uh, many resources will suggest that a peer reviewer read through a paper three times. Oh, Maria, I'm sorry. I forgot to pause okay. on the slide. Did you want yeah, me to? Yeah. I'll go back here and pause for yeah. a second. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. Oke, okay, it's okay, Kate. Jadi uh, tadi Kate sudah menjelaskan pertama tadi mengenai tipe-tipe review. 
Jadi ada empat tipe review yang dijelaskan oleh Kate. Kalau mungkin kita sendiri cuma tahu mengenai double anonymous. Jadi ternyata ada empat, ada editorial review. Ini biasanya dilakukan oleh editorial board member. Reviewer dan uh, penulis masih mengetahui masing-masing. Jadi namanya saling kita saling mengetahui. Terus kemudian ini adalah proses review yang paling cepat tapi bias. adalah single review atau anonymous jadi author tidak tahu uh, di review oleh siapa review uh, reviewer tidak tahu siapa reviewer lain dan reviewer tidak tahu siapa authornya itu namanya single review terus kemudian yang ketiga ada double anonymous jadi sebelum submit paper reviewer dan author tidak tahu sama-sama sama sekali author minta supaya dia anonymous sebelum dia submit papernya Tentu saja double anonymous ini lebih kritikal, tidak bias, dan tentu saja pastinya menjamin etika publikasi itu sendiri. Yang keempat yang mungkin jarang sekali dilakukan di sini adalah open review. Jadi reviewer dan author tahu nama masing-masing, reviewer eh, proses reviewnya lebih transparan, bahkan nama reviewernya itu muncul pada saat artikel dipublikasi. Terus kemudian eh, semua bisa melihat komentar dari reviewer. Dan juga kepentingannya untuk reviewer adalah reviewer bisa mendapatkan public credit dari apa yang sudah dia review. Nah, kita langsung masuk ke tanggung jawab reviewer. Tadi Kate menjelaskan mengenai tanggung jawab reviewer itu apa saja. Yang pertama kali adalah profesional mempunyai tanggung jawab akademis seperti tadi yang sudah dijelaskan oleh John di awal. Terus kemudian menghindari skala kepentingan, baik itu personal, finansial, intelektual, politikal, dan lain-lain. Kalau kita ingat, ini kasus yang sekarang sedang terjadi untuk menghindari uh, skala kepentingan. Terus kemudian tanggung jawab uh, reviewer adalah tepat dan responsif. Lalu kita lanjut lagi. Adalah reviewer dituntut untuk objektif dan jujur dan bertujuan baik. Ini juga tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh John. Uh, intinya reviewer berkontribusi pada ilmu dan suportif pada penulis editornya. Oke. Untuk pause sebentar di diskusi. Kate, can you go back to the slides of uh, the discussion? Oke. Okay. Nah, Bapak Ibu, tadi saya sudah jelaskan mengenai empat uh, proses tipe-tipe review. Ada mengenai open review. Yang kalau dari saya pribadi, saya jarang sekali mengenal, mengenal tentang open review ini. Saya cuma ingin tahu, bisa dijawab di kolom chat sekarang, apakah Bapak-Ibu di jurnalnya pernah melakukan open review? Boleh saya minta jawabannya dalam waktu 10 detik saja. Dan apa tanggapan Bapak-Ibu mengenai open review ini? Kira-kira mau nggak melakukan ini untuk jurnal yang sedang Bapak-Ibu kelola? Dan mengapa? Oke, okay, saya tunggu jawabannya di kolom chat. Belum pernah, tidak pernah, belum pernah. Tidak pernah, takutnya objektivitas dilanggar oleh oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Baik. Baik. Ada yang belum pernah karena takut ada konflik of interest. Tapi juga menarik untuk dicoba. Baik. Oke. Okay. Kate, uh, you can see from the chat that uh, most of our participants uh, had never done the open review uh, yet. I think they might be interested, some of them uh, might be interested to do it because it is good for the reviewer. But some uh, some um, comment said that uh, it cannot it, it, it cannot uh, uh, object uh, there is no objectivity and also um, yeah. but, but uh, it is interesting. They are afraid also of the conflict of interest. Oke, okay. terima kasih Bapak-Ibu atas jawabannya di kolom chat. Kate, you may continue for the next slide. 
Great. Thank you. And thank you everyone who responded in the chat. I'm happy to have a, more of a conversation about this um, at the end of the call as well. And um, we'll be hearing more from PKP about open review um, in the coming months as we're de further developing OJS. Um, there'll be more information and options for that type of review coming. So i um, happy to um, connect you with more information about that in the future. Okay, so some, some brief guidelines for reviewers. So um, I mentioned that a lot of guidance will suggest that a reviewer read through a, a submission um, three times in total to, to get their review written. On the first read through, um, you'd be doing just a general scan just to get a sense of the paper and uh, the main features. You'd be looking at the scope of the paper, um, the main headings, the structure of the document, the style of writing, and um, pull out some key results from tables and figures. On the second read through, you'd be doing a more detailed read, uh, reading it um, from one end to the other with more care and attention. And you'd be looking out for things that you might start to write down um, to start forming your review. So things like the originality of ideas, the order of the sections, if they're in the, the appropriate order, um, the length and readability of the paper, note any major problems, contradictions, or omissions, um, and start thinking about suggestions for revision and some positive comments as well about the qualities of the paper that you'd like to share. On the final read through, this is where you'll be writing um, your review. So there's a lot of content on this slide, but um, Maria um, has let me know that we can circulate the slides um, to everyone attending today. So you'll be able to look back. This is the kind of thing that you might find in reviewer guidance guidelines for a journal as well. Um, but you'd be looking at things like the title, abstract, um, the terminology used, the research question. And I've just highlighted some words here. You're looking to see if um, things are accurately summarized, if uh, the wording is clear and easy to understand, um, if the research question is contributing meaningfully to the field, if it, it, does it, is it unique and does it have value? Um, is the methodology appropriate? Uh, are any statistics used, do they seem to be accurate? Um, so accuracy, reliability, clarity, um, uh, value, um, those are the, the types of things that you're looking for um, that you would include in your review. And then when it comes time to actually writing your review, um, your intention is, is really to ask yourself, um, as you're writing each comment, does the comment help to improve the manuscript? So um, you're, we're hoping that peer reviewers will be specific in the feedback that they're giving. Um, so one way to do this is to um, provide supporting evidence with references, and that will help both the, the editor and the author understand what your feedback is. So rather than just saying um, that, that something isn't um, as quali high quality as you'd like to see, actually give concrete feedback on what you'd like to see improved or what you'd suggest the author do um, so that they get a sense of when they go to make their revisions, what it is you'd like to see done differently. Um, it also helps to show uh, that you understand what the author is trying to put forward or to speak up if you are not understanding something. Um, so you might say something like, from what I understand in this section, you are doing this, or um, it seems that the focus of this section is this, or I'm not sure I understand. Uh, it seems to me that you're explaining this, but could you, I think I need more clarity. So that's the kind of feedback you might give. Um, you always want to be professional in your review. Avoid being overly unkind, critical, or disparaging. Of course, you're critiquing the work. As John said, that can be difficult for anyone to receive. Um, but overall, you want to be supportive and, and kind towards the person that's done this work. Um, and don't forget that one of the um, pieces you're being asked for as a peer reviewer is to make a recommendation to the editor. So um, we'll see what this looks like in OJS, but you might suggest accepting with or without revisions, resubmitting for review, or declining the submission. And make sure that your recommendation aligns with the comments so that the editor can see how you've made suggestions for um, improvements to the paper that align with the recommendation that you're making to the editor. Um, some things to avoid doing as a reviewer, it can be tempted to um, 
copy edit, so to try to fix wording or to rewrite the paper in your preferred style of writing. Um, but that comes later in the process and as a peer reviewer you're really just looking at the content of the work and not the way that it's written. Um, Keep comments and revisions within the scope of the paper. So this just means um, don't be, uh, try not to make suggestions to the author that would um, take their paper uh, along a different path or in a different direction altogether, where perhaps that would be a separate piece of research. Um, so be clear as you're giving feedback if um, some clarity is needed to make the manuscript um, make sense or if. Uh, you'd like to know more about a topic, but it's not necessary to include that in this particular paper. Um, and be aware of accountability. So this is things like, um, again, an ethical concern um, that unfortunately does happen sometimes is reviewers asking to see more citations of their own work in a paper that they're reviewing, and that's just to boost their own citation count. Um, so you shouldn't be asking an author to cite you unless it strengthens their paper to do so. Um, and also not criticizing someone else's work that's being cited in the paper along the same lines. If you see someone um, who is perhaps publishing um, on a similar topic to you, they get cited and you do not, um, unless that's an issue for the understanding or the clarity of the work, that's not something that reviewers should be um, commenting on. Um, and I'll just quickly, I think I'm going over time, but just a few um, challenges of peer review I wanted to address. Um, Journals sometimes have difficulties with the quality of the reviews they're receiving, so they're not as high quality as they'd like, um, or they have difficulty recruiting and retaining um, reviewers. So um, some suggestions for this, make sure that the journal is providing clear and detailed guidance so that uh, reviewers understand what's expected of them. So some of um, the things that I, that I included in a previous slide on what a reviewer might comment on, those could go into your reviewer guidance so they know what they're being asked to, to give feedback on. Um, monitor the performance of reviewers. So there's a way that you can do this in OJS to um, indicate uh, sort of uh, how you would rate a review you've received. So um, Patricia will show us that. Um, thank reviewers for the work they're doing. Um, this is another option in OJS. After you've read a review, there's an option to send a thank you note. Um, and also communicate with reviewers, provide them feedback, um, try to have a strong relationship between the reviewer and the editor, then they're more likely to come back and choose to review for you again. Um, but at the same time, don't um, ask the same reviewer to review too many ma manuscripts as uh, you might end up overloading them and then they um, might not have the capacity to, to do as many reviews as you're asking for. Um, it's a good idea, if you can, to publicly acknowledge reviewers. So I've just made a note here um, about ORCID. We won't go into ORCID today. Um, there will be another webinar on ORCID um, in the future. Um, but there is a way uh, using um, ORCID embedded in a journal that you can have uh, a record of someone's peer review sent to their ORCID record. Um, another way journals do this is just to publish a list of reviewers on the website for each issue, for example as a way to publicly recognize the work they're doing. Um, and then for retention and um, recruitment, I have some suggestions for um, ways that journals might recruit reviewers and I do acknowledge that this can be difficult. It can be difficult to find enough people willing to do this work, um, but some suggestions, place a call for reviewers on the journal website and circulate it through newsletters and bulletins. Um, we don't recommend sending bulk unsolicited emails though, because that can come across as spam. Um, you can invite authors who have published papers on similar topics to what your journal publishes. Ask your editorial board members or your current reviewers for recommendations of their colleagues. Um, do some networking at meetings and conferences and talk about your journal and ask people if they'd be interested in reviewing for you. Um, and if possible, aim for gender and geographic diversity again to try and reduce the bias in the peer review process. We want a variety of voices and perspectives involved in that peer review process. So a couple more questions again for folks to think about. Um, what peer review challenges have you faced with your journal and how are review practices or approaches different from what I've spoken about today um, for your journal or where you're working? And I will pause again and then um, Maria over to you and then we'll be on to Patricia for, for her slides.
Oke, okay, thank you, Kate. Jadi te, tadi Kate menjelaskan mengenai uh, apa sih yang harus dilakukan oleh reviewer. Jadi sebelum memulai untuk mereview, reviewer itu harus familiar dengan reviewer uh, guidelines dan juga scoring. Um, bahkan sampai disarankan untuk baca naskahnya, artikelnya sampai tiga kali. Pahami cakupan, headings-nya, dan juga struktur dokumennya apakah berurutan atau tidak. Bagaimana hasil tabel dan gagal. Berapa hal penting, lihat juga mengenai originitas, apakah artikelnya mudah dimengerti, lihat masalah utamanya apa, terus berikan saran dan komentar terhadap naskahnya. Baca kembali dan kemudian tulis reviewnya. Pertimbangkan mengenai judul, abstrak, wordingnya, research questionnya, metode, hasil, dan juga kesimpulannya. Tadi Kate juga menjelaskan mengenai critical review, jadi critical review itu tentu saja kalau kita tadi seperti sudah di mention oleh John kadang-kadang eh, hasil dari reviewer eh, hasil dari review itu menyakitkan tapi eh, kita menganggapnya sebagai saran yang membangun dan objektif eh, spesifik dan memberikan beberapa bukti serta referensi eh, critical review juga seharusnya profesional jangan terlalu kritis dan beri rekomendasi kepada editor dan hindari eh, copy edit. Nah eh, juga harus dipertimbangkan mengenai kualitas reviewernya. Kita harus mempunyai proses pemilihan reviewer yang baik itu seperti apa, cari reviewer yang punya kredibilitas, yang dapat kita lihat karyanya di Orkid. Pasti banyak dari kita yang sudah mempunyai Orkid ID. Nah, kita akan ada webinar di bulan Desember nanti, bekerja sama dengan Universitas Multimedia Nusantara, dan juga tentunya dari Orkid dan PKP. Akan ada webinarnya sendiri membahas mengenai ini. Terus kemudian kita akan e, menanyakan kredibilitas reviewer ke penulis atau editor lain. Berikan panduan yang jelas dan detail kepada para reviewer. Jangan lupa setiap mereka melakukan review, berikan email terima kasih. Itu yang sering kita lupa. Sering komunikasi. Jadi kalau sudah komunikasi, sudah diberikan e, hasil reviewnya, kadang-kadang kita lupa untuk bertanya mengenai kabar, cuma sebagai early conversation gitu tapi sebaiknya itu harus terus dilakukan untuk hubungan yang baik kalau dia sudah mereview beberapa jangan kemudian karena dia cepat responsif cepat tanggap kita memberikan semuanya kepada uh, si reviewer ini jangan sampai mereka merasa overloaded nah cara merekrut reviewer yang lain adalah melalui uh, call for reviewer di website ataupun di newsletter jurnal kita kita bisa juga mengundang autor dari naskah yang sudah diterbitkan sebagai reviewer kita dan minta rekomendasi dari editor dan reviewer yang sudah ada. Kemudian kita juga bisa mencari reviewer ini dari konferensi yang kita ikuti dan juga uh, pastikan kita mempunyai beberapa keberagaman gender dan juga keluarga negara. Nah, keluarga negaraan ini yang tentu saja pasti akan dipertimbangkan pada saat kita mengajukan akreditasi jurnal. Oke, okay. uh, di yang sedang dipost oleh uh, Kate saat ini adalah mengenai diskusi. Jadi saya ingin bertanya dalam waktu 10 detik saja seperti tadi, tantangan peer review apakah yang dihadapi pada jurnal Anda? Apakah ada perbedaan praktek review di jurnal Anda? Seperti tadi sudah dijelaskan mengenai ada cara profesional untuk merekrut reviewer, apakah pernah melakukan call for reviewer di website, dan lain sebagainya. Saya minta partisipasi Bapak-Ibu sekalian dalam waktu 10 detik saja. Silakan dijawab di kolom chat sekarang. Oke, okay, ada yang sudah menjawab bahwa seringkali mereka melewati batas overdue. Oke, call for reviewer dilakukan uh, dalam email. Oke, okay, kita sudah mendapat banyak jawaban di sini. Ya Pak. Uh, the most case in Indonesian uh, journal case uh, here uh, we can say that uh, we are struggling with the overdue uh, to keep reminding the reviewer to submit 
their reviewer uh, their review result that is a most our most common problem in here uh, maybe in, uh, next we can compile all of these comments and uh, send it back to you and we can work together on this one terima kasih bapak ibu atas jawabannya that would be great you may yeah uh, i think this is the last session of kate uh, now we will go on to patricia i think patricia are you there Thank you, Maria. I will stop my screen share so Patricia can take over. Patricia? Maria, Patricia says she's not able to unmute. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, boleh dari host? Baik, sudah dijadikan co host. Sudah dijadikan co host. Perfect. I think. Are you okay. able to hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you clearly. Okay. You have another 30 minutes, Patricia. You may continue. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, selamat pagi. Um, I'm going to be going over how peer review works in OJS. Um, so Kate already mentioned um, a lot of these in detail. So I'm just going to talk about them in the context of OJS. Um, so OJS supports the anonymous reviewer, anonymous author, where both identities are not known to each other. So the system keeps both of the information about the author and reviewers um, a secret from each other. Um, next, we have the anonymous reviewer disclosed author. Uh, where the reviewer's identity is kept anonymous from the author, but the reviewers can see the author details if they wanted to look um, at the full submission detail. Um, and then the last type of peer review would be um, open peer review, where the identities of both the author um, and reviewer are, are known to each other. So the reviewer can see the author's name in the submission details, and the author could see a list of the reviewers that have accepted um, reviews in their paper, um, and they can engage in discussions with um, other reviewers and each other. Um, and I'll be pointing out where you can find the information in a little bit um, and how these um, will differ between each type of review. So before I go into a little bit more detail, um, I did wanna point out that regardless of the type of peer review um, that you select in OJS, um, any user with access to the author's identity. So this may be an editor who is also a reviewer will be restricted uh, by OJS. So you can see that in the little red box here that Edwin editor has been locked uh, from being selected as a peer reviewer, but there is the option to unlock them if you as the editor feel like they are the most appropriate person um, to undertake this review. Um, and then anonymizing file. So even um, though OJS will anonymize um, the information about the authors and reviewers, um, editors may still need to anonymize the documents that are uploaded by authors and reviewers. Um, so you can see on the left here, um, there's no name um, associated with these review files, but if a user downloads them, you may be able to see who wrote um, the document. Um, so these would need to be removed. Um, and authors may also include their name within their article um, and things like their title page, footnotes, references. Um, so there is manual work that needs to be done to remove this um, before um, it can be sent for a, a truly anonymous review. Um, alternatively, editors can ask authors uh, to remove all of this information uh, before submitting it into your journal, um, but there's probably still needs to be a layer of checking to make sure that the um, authors have followed your instructions. All right, so now I'm gonna go over how to set up your review in OJS. So most of the review settings that you'll need as an editor can be found in your settings, workflow, um, and review. And this would be for OJS 3.3 that I'm showing here. Um, so in the setup, you'll be able to configure the review type, um, access, um, the deadlines for the review, um, and configure system, system reminders that you'd like the system to send. 
So these are very similar to what we have in OGS2. Um, the response deadlines that you'll be able to configure is what the system will use to calculate the due dates and the response dates um, that will be sent to the reviewers. However, if you as the author want to change this, either extend the amount of time they have to respond or less time, um, you can change these for individual manuscripts. Um, next, you have your guidelines. Um, so these will typically outline the criteria that reviewers will use to judge the submission uh, and the suitability for the publication. These may include instructions for preparing um, an effective and useful review. Um, and the information that you enter in your review settings uh, will be shown to the reviewers as part of the review request. So you can see here that it's going to be in step two of the review request that they'll receive. Um, they'll be asked to review this before they download um, and complete the review for you. And then finally, um, you do have the option of setting up review forms on OJS. These can be used to provide reviewers with a set of questions that they'll respond to rather than just open text box where they can do comments. Um, this can help focus their feedback in ways that are more useful to you. Um, you'll find that OJS offers a number of different responses, um, including check boxes, um, text boxes and drop down. So you'll be able to do both qualitative and quantitative um, types of questions in the OJS review forms. And then editors can also indicate whether specific questions are required to be completed by the reviewer um, by selecting um, that option um, that you see here on the screen. Um, and you can also indicate whether or not these should be included in the message to author. So when you import your reviewer comments, um, only the questions that you've asked to be included will be added there. And once the review form has been activated and is being used um, by a reviewer in a particular manuscript, um, editors will no longer be able to edit these forms. Um, and then the last thing here, so this is what you'll see as a reviewer. Um, in a default view, you'll just have the text boxes. So you see on the bottom of the screen here, there's a text box for author and editor, where editors, or sorry, reviewers can just add any comments that they'd like without specific instructions there. Uh, whereas the review form here, um, will you'll see questions um, that's set up by the journal. Um, and then the last thing I'll go over is the section review forms. Um, so once a review form has been activated, um, you can set this up uh, for specific sections. So if you have set up a specific section review form, so for articles, for example, you have a specific um, review form for that, you can set that up. Or if you have a single review form um, that should be used for every section, you can indicate that and the system will automatically um, use that um, instead of the default form when sending you the review request. Maria, over to you for the translation. Okay, okay, thank you, Patricia. Jadi Patricia menjelaskan mengenai uh, tipe review tadi pertama kali. Si, uh, pertama kali Kate menjelaskan ada empat review. Nah sekarang dijelaskan oleh Patricia ada tipe-tipe reviewer yang ada di OJS. Jadi ada anonymous reviewer atau anonymous author. Terus kemudian ada anonymous reviewer, author tidak anonymous dan juga open. Nah OJS memungkinkan juga uh, untuk melock data author dari reviewer yang punya role sebagai editor ataupun sebagai journal manager untuk menghindari bias. Editor harus membuat file yang uh, file yang uh, file mengenai author atau reviewer anonymous. Uh, setup review dapat kita lihat di settings, workflow dan kemudian masuk ke review. Pada setting, editor harus dapat men-setting review, tipe review, deadline dan juga reminder. Editor harus membuat guidelines dan form review. Jika tidak ada form review, ada dua opsi yang disediakan oleh OJS. Uh, bis, uh, men mem provide atau menyediakan komentar untuk editor dan juga untuk uh, author. Nah, yang terakhir ada section review forms. Nah, um, 
saya sendiri sih kurang familiar mengenai section review forms ini dan saya melihat pada prakteknya jarang sekali yang menggunakan section review forms. Nanti mungkin bisa ditanyakan lebih lanjut mengenai section review forms ini. Entah di kolom chat ataupun nanti uh, pada saat uh, Q&A session. Oke, okay, uh, Patricia, you may... All right, so now I'm going to walk you through a live demonstration showing you the different perspectives um, from different roles. Um, so our demonstration journal uh, will be using an anonymous reviewer, anonymous author peer review, as that's um, still the most common um, type of review that we have. Right. Um, so you can see the back end of OJS 3.3 here. I'm logged in as one of our editors. Um, I can see here all the papers that are assigned to me as this editor um, and all the other ones that are in the system. Um, so all of the papers that I'm working on right now are in the review stage. Um, you can see here um, there are going to be um, some notifications um, if there is anything that I need to do as a editor. Um, so this first paper here is waiting for me to assign here. Um, the last paper that you see here, there is a, a review that's overdue, which is, um, as you mentioned, um, a common um, kind of issue um, within your community, um, also within my journal here. Um, so I'm going to go into this paper here, um, and I can see that it is now in um, the, peer re the review round, um, and it is waiting for me to assign reviewers. Um, to assign reviewers, I'm going to use the review box that we see here um, to click Add Review. Um, so again, um, if there are any users that are also editors in the system, they will be automatically locked. Um, so this would be me as an editor right now. Um, and as Kate mentioned, um, you don't want to overload or invite the same reviewers. Um, over and over again. So OJS does show you how many active reviews um, a reviewer currently has. Um, so we can see here that this reviewer has one review, one active review, um, so is the second one here. Um, and then you'll also be able to see the rating system um, that's available on OJS. Um, so if editors um, rate a reviewer, um, the rating will only be shown to other um, editors on the system. Um, and if you expand the menu here, you'll be able to see some additional information about reviewers. Um, so how many they may have declined, uh, completed, canceled, and how, may, how long it may take them to complete the review, as, long, as well as an average. Um, if there were additional comments um, about this reviewer, there will be additional information that you'll see here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this reviewer. Um, and you can see here um, the email template that has been um, selected. Um, this is the due dates that um, the system uses uh, based on the settings that I have selected. If I did want to change this to give the reviewer more time to respond, I would just click here and um, select a new date from the calendar that appears. Um, I can confirm what files they'll have access to. Um, and by default, um, this will select the type of peer review that I've um, configured for my journal. So that's again, anonymous reviewer, anonymous author. Um, and here you can select a review form. If none have been set up, then you won't see any here. Um, so none will just give you text boxes. But if you just want to select one of your review forms that you've created, you can select that from the drop down. I'm going to go ahead and um, assign that reviewer. And I'll just um, assign a secondary one. Um, just so we have two reviewers on this paper. Um, so you can see here that the request has been sent. Um, this is when they need to respond, and then the type of review. Um, there are additional options that you'll see here. So review details, you'll be able to see um, their comments when those are completed. Uh, email function, um, the edit button here will allow you to change the due dates. Um, this might be helpful in the event that a reviewer lets you know that they're not able to complete it by uh, November 22nd, but they can do it on the 30th. So you can extend that date for them, um, and that will set up a new date. Um, and if you did need to unassign them, um, here there's the option there. 
um, if they just don't respond uh, to your request, for example. So I'm now going to log in as a reviewer and show you what that's going to look like uh, from their end. Perfect. Uh, so here um, you can see that I'm logged in as a reviewer. I'm just going to refresh that so I get the new manuscript that was assigned to me. Um, you can now see that there. Um, and as a, re a reviewer, I can only see things that have been assigned to myself. So this is the new um, request that I have received from the system. So I'm going to view that. I can see that these are the due dates um, that are important and what I need to do as a reviewer. So if you click view, you'll be able to see the details of the manuscript, um, the title, the abstract, and the type of peer review. Um, in the submission details, I'll be able to see the full, full details um, here. Um, since it is an anonymous reviewer, anonymous author, I won't be able to see the um, author information here. I can see the file and again, the important dates. If there were competing interests um, that I need to declare, I could do so here. Otherwise, um, I can indicate that I don't have any competing interests and then accept the review. So your journal should have set up guidelines. Again, these are um, information, things that reviewers should be thinking about um, before completing the review. Um, so I would typically review this as a reviewer before continuing to step three. Um, and here, this is where I will complete my review. Again, if I did want to review the guidelines while I'm completing the review, I can do so by clicking review guidelines. Um, so here I can see a review form, um, since that is what the journal had requested. Anything with the asterisk here um, means that it is required. So I'm just going to enter some information for our review. Um, and then here we can indicate the overall rating. Um, and then this is where I, as a reviewer, would uh, provide my recommendation. Um, and if I did want to engage in a discussion, um, I will do so here. Um, so since this is an anonymous reviewer, anonymous author, I won't be able to communicate with the author, um, just the editor that's assigned on this paper. Um, I can go ahead and select a um, recommendation. Um, if I did want to come back to this and complete it later, there is the option there for me. Otherwise, you would just submit the review, um, and then the editor will receive a notification um, that that has been completed. So I'm now going to go back um, as a reviewer into my first screen, um, and I can see that that review has been completed. Um, and you'll see the status change here um, as um, reviewer is completed, or if it becomes overdue. I'm just going to show you other examples here. Um, here, so this one is a manuscript where I have multiple reviewers that are overdue. Um, so the system is set up to send automated reminders, so it's likely that they've already received this. Um, but if I did want to send them another reminder, it does allow me to do that, um, so I can send them another friendly reminder email by using that um, here. So I'll just send reminders to all of my overdue remind reviewers uh, before checking my last manuscript. Um, so here I can see that the second manuscript on my list um, has two completed reviews and one hump. So I will take a look at that in my system. Um, so I can see that the Reviews have been submitted for both of these. Um, if you click review details, you'll be able to see um, the comments um, that they have entered. Um, so I have two examples here. So this um, reviewer um, only used the default um, response boxes. So that's why you'll only see the comments for authors and editors um, with their recommendation. Um, I can go ahead as an editor and rate them uh, based on their timeliness, the quality of the, the review. Um, so these are things that the editorial team can determine how to rate the reviewers. Um, and once I've confirmed that, you can see the option to thank reviewers, as Kate mentioned. 
um, it's always helpful to send a thank you email. Um, and that's something that OJS can help you do. And then the second reminder reviewer here, you can see that um, I've they have um, the review form. So you'll see the answers that they've provided um, along with their recommendation. Um, again, I can rate this reviewer and confirm. Um, send the thank you email. Um, and then once I have the required number of reviewers and recommendation, um, I can then select um, my decision as a editor. So I'm going to go ahead and um, record my decision. Uh, so I, here I can decide whether or not I will want another round of peer review right away. Um, you can always prompt this um, afterwards. Um, so you can see here the revision, um, the email template, sorry, um, does correspond with the decision that I've uh, selected. Um, and here is the option to um, add the reviewer comments and questionnaire that I have mentioned. Um, so once you select this, um, it will include um, the comments from the reviewers um, along with the answers um, from the second reviewer's questionnaire. And since this is an anonymous reviewer, anonymous author peer review, um, you can see here that it will just show you um, reviewer A, B rather than their names. Um, OJS does have the option of blind CCing the reviewers. This means that they would receive a copy of the email, um, but there's just a warning here that they will be able to see uh, the author's identity if you do um, send them a copy of the email. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this if you are looking to follow an anonymous peer reviewer, anonymous author review. Um, so I will go ahead and record my decision. Um, and then from there, you'll typically just wait for either the revised paper um, and then continue on the process. I'm just going to go back into my slides here. Um, and just show you kind of how it would differ um, with the other types of peer review. Um, so with the anonymous reviewer known author, um, if I were to click on view submission detail, um, you'll see the author name listed there in the box that you see here. Um, and then um, as we saw in the live demonstration, um, an anonymous reviewer, anonymous author won't show you that information. Um, and then in an open peer review, again, you'll be able to see all of the author information if you did take a look at the submission details. Um, and then from the author's perspective, um, they'll be able to see um, a list of the reviewers um, once they've accepted the review. Um, they won't be able to see any of the other ones um, that may have been canceled or have declined. Um, they can see the statuses, um, and we improved the wording that you can see here, just to give authors some reassurance um, that um, editors are taking care of it, even if it is overdue. Um, and then they'll be able to see live updates as that gets completed. Um, and in terms of communication in an open peer review, um, you'll be able to see um, a full list of all of the the users that are active in a particular paper. So I can see here as a reviewer that the author is listed under the list of our participants. And as an author on the right, I can see the reviewer um, and they can both engage in a discussion with each other. Um, and in the decision email on an open peer review, you can see um, the full name of the um, reviewer listed if you import the comments from the reviewers. I'm going to hand it over to you, Maria, for the translations. Thank you so much, Kate. Uh, tadi Kate sudah menjelaskan mengenai, uh, uh, sorry, Patricia, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm mistaken. Uh, Patricia sudah menjelaskan mengenai uh, uh, demonstrasi uh, dari peer review, bagaimana peer review itu bekerja di OJS 3.3. Tadi Patricia juga menjelaskan bagaimana dari sisi reviewernya pada saat dia menerima um, permintaan untuk mereview suatu naskah dari editor, terus kemudian bagaimana dari sisi jurnal manajernya ketika reviewer sudah mensubmit uh, hasil reviewnya. Uh, bisa dilihat di situ uh, apakah... Uh, 
uh, yang diambil dari uh, jurnal manajernya ataupun dari editornya apakah ini review yang anonimus atau tidak. Jadi kalau misalnya anonimus, uh, tentu saja autornya di tapi dia tidak bisa melihat namanya, jadi yang tertulis hanyalah reviewer A dan reviewer B saja. Itu. Terus kemudian ada beberapa hal yang disampaikan uh, lewat uh, demonstrasi di uh, peer, peer review di OJS 3.3. Tentu saja kita sudah banyak mengetahui karena rata-rata dari kita sudah menggunakan OJS 3.3 ini. Uh, terus kemudian um, uh, Patricia juga menjelaskan mengenai uh, Sebentar, saya balik lagi ke presentasinya. Mengenai tadi review request, terus kemudian ada discussion-nya, hasil diskusi antara reviewer dengan editor. Nah, terus bagaimana dari autornya sendiri akan berdiskusi juga dengan editornya. Terus ada decisions emailnya, jadi sesudah ada hasil dari reviewer akan ada decisions email. Terus kemudian kita bisa lihat dari slides yang diberikan oleh Patricia tadi mengenai, jangan lupa setiap kali Patricia mengingatkan juga sesudah reviewer memberikan hasil reviewnya, jangan lupa untuk memberikan surat terima kasih. Dan dari OJS sudah ada template-nya, jadi tinggal dimodifikasi saja kata-katanya dan langsung dikirimkan ke emailnya dari reviewer tersebut. Nah, kemudian sudah proses review selesai, editor dapat memberikan editor decisions kepada author apakah naskahnya diterima atau tidak dan juga akan ada spesifik komen dari para reviewernya. Itu nanti sudah ada di OJS 3.3 yang mungkin sudah banyak diinstal oleh Bapak dan Ibu sekalian. Oke, Patrice itu dan All right, thanks, Maria. So now I'm going to be going over um, what we'll have um, coming in OJS 3.5. Um, so with each release of OJS, we are looking to make improvements for all the users that are using OJS. Um, and in terms of uh, peer review, um, we do have a number of enhanced tools um, in addition to all the new features that we'll have. So I'm just going to highlight a few of these um, aimed at helping to improve the peer review process, um, and this would be um, the review statuses in our new dashboard um, that will allow editors to uh, track manuscript statuses more easily, um, and then the new invitation process um, for inviting users to take part in your journal, um, and then the ability to send reminders prior to the due date, um, which will hopefully help with all the overdue reviews um, that most journals have. And finally, the option for downloading review forms. All right, so beginning with um, the new statuses here. So you can see um, this is going to be the new dashboard um, in OJS 3.5, um, which will provide editors with a clearer um, idea of what's happening in their paper. So on the left is going to be um, the navigation bar, um, which will allow them to see um, more clearly the statuses and the number of papers um, in each um, stage. Um, and then hopefully you're able to see the little um, round um, um, numbers and colors under the editorial activity. And those would correspond for the reviewers, um, either the status of their review, how many days they have to complete it, if they've canceled or um, they've declined with the X, um, along with uh, any activity um, that's required for that particular manuscript. Um, so with more information, um, this will allow editors to take um, actions in a more timely manner, um, and hopefully avoiding delays um, and making for a smoother uh, workflow process. Um, and then next we have the reviewer dashboard. So similar to the main editor one, there's going to be more detailed information um, that they'll be able to see um, and actions they can take right from the manuscript. 
again, um, the idea here is to make things easier for the users to see what they need to do, uh, provide feedback and submit reviews. Um, and by having more detailed information right on the dashboard, um, we do hope that this will increase the efficiency and encourage um, reviewers to participate in a um, smoother experience um, and hopefully make the review process more effective overall. Um, and next I'm gonna be talking about the new um, invitation process. So rather than simply going ahead and creating user accounts for um, potential reviewers, there is now going to be an invitation process that allows editors to invite potential reviewers um, to take a role in their journal. Um, they'll also have the option of indicating start dates. So you can see that on the bottom there. Um, and then whether they will be added to the masthead. Um, so this would be the list of the users um, that are involved in the journal. So giving them that public recognition um, here and then um, end dates for when they may have completed being a reviewer for your journal. Um, just giving more transparency um, in who's involved in your um, journal. Um, and then we have the ability to send reminders. Um, so as most of you will probably be familiar, our JS will only send system reminders once a reviewer has passed the deadline. Um, so now we've added the function to um, send reminders uh, before the due date. Um, so you'll be able to use the slider here to indicate the number of days you'll want to send reminders before the expected due dates, hopefully um, shortening um, the, or reducing the number of overdue reminders that may occur. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna be talking about is the option to download review form. But again, this is not the last feature we have for 3.5. Um, and this has been added based on uh, review re requests from editors. Um, so the option to export the review comments or review questionnaire um, in various formats. Um, this makes it easier to share to other editors in your journal, or if you need to share them in kind of boards, or if you did want to engage in open peer review um, and publish um, those reviews um, alongside the articles, this will allow you to do just that. Um, and that is um, it for my section. I'm going to pass it over to Kate again, to talk about some of the additional resources that we do have available. Thanks, Patricia. Um, what I did want to do is just share my screen again. I'm just gonna quickly navigate to a page on the PKP website that I will also link to in the chat. Um, on um, where folks can go to get support. So um, we have a number of places um, where we share um, information and guidance and also where we invite our community to come and have conversations and share um, your thoughts or concerns or any problems that you're running into. Um, so our community forum is where um, we ask folks to go with their questions um, to talk to other members of the community and talk to PKP staff as well. Um, so you're welcome to post on the forum if you ever run into any problems or um, or stuck on something in OJS. Um, I talked about PKP school at the start of the presentation, but we also have the documentation hub where we have written documentation um, for you to browse through. Um, our documentation, I'll just go here briefly, includes guides for um, learning OJS, similar to what we have in PKP school, but we also have guides and things on things like journal policies and workflows. So this can be helpful um, as you're developing your reviewer policies, for example, um, a guide for starting a new journal, um, getting your journal discoverable in different indexes um, and things like that. So I do recommend that folks just take a look and see what's here that might be useful to you um, in your journal. And as I said, please do post on the forum if you'd like to reach out to us if you have questions. Um, so I just wanted to end with that. And thanks very much. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Kate and Patricia, for the very useful information, which is also we will be very useful to our OGS users in Indonesia. Uh, sebelum saya akhiri di sesi presentasi pada siang hari ini, tadi saya sempat mau menjelaskan sedikit mengenai apa yang disampaikan Patricia di slide uh, terakhirnya, yaitu mengenai uh, apa saja uh, fitur terbaru dari uh, peer review di OGS 3.5. Mungkin banyak dari kita yang sudah mendapatkan kesempatan untuk melakukan user testing, baik itu melalui sesi wawancara maupun mengisi via Excel form. Terima kasih atas bantuannya, terima kasih atas masukannya yang pasti akan sangat berguna untuk OJS 3.5 ini. Tentu saja di OJS 3.5 ini tampilan dari peer review akan semakin menarik dan sangat user friendly. Baik, eh, tanpa perlu berpanjang kata, saya sudah banyak melihat pertanyaan. Eh, seen so many questions in uh, chat. And thank you, Kate, for uh, answering some of the questions in English. Uh, I want to uh, try to translate some of the questions in Bahasa. So uh, you or Patricia can answer that, that question. The first question is, um, wait a second, from Pa Agus uh, Uin. He's, he, he was asking about how to make sure about the transparency and integrity in the peer review process in uh, OJS to make a qualified publication. You or Patricia can answer about that, uh, Kate or Patricia. Okay, sorry, Maria. So just clarifying um, how to make the process transparent. Yes. The process of peer review, um, transparent yeah. to the author. Yeah, transparent to the author and also uh, for the uh, also for the reader and uh, not um, create a bias for uh, in the peer review process. Okay, so um, so I think one of the main recommendations we have is to set up reviewer guidelines in OJS. So um, in the settings that Patricia showed, um, be as clear as you can for reviewers to understand what the expectations are. And you can publish those review guidelines for authors to see as well. So then when an author submits, they know what process um, their, their submission will go through. Um, the one of the requirements um, for journals that are applying for inclusion in the directory of open access journals is to indicate the type of review that they do on the website somewhere so in OGS would usually say in the about the journal field you could say um, that you have double anonymous review or single anonymous review or open review and just describe that that process um, you can talk about how many reviewers usually see a paper or usually uh, provide feedback on a paper. Um, just put as much information up front on the website as you can so that anyone coming to your journal as a reader or an author um, knows what kind of process um, you'll be going through. So for transparency, I would recommend um, following COPE, the Committee on Publication Ethics I mentioned earlier, and also the Directory of Open Access Journals. Follow their guidelines um, for reviewers. I'll see if I can find a link for you here as well. Patricia, did you have anything to add? Oke, okay. uh, thank you Kate for the answer. Uh, buat Pak Agus dari UIN, uh, sarannya dari uh, dari Kate mengenai uh, transparansi dan integriti, uh, tadi sudah dijelaskan mengenai proses uh, peer review itu sendiri, tipe-tipenya seperti apa, uh, itu dijelaskan secara uh, transparan di website. Terus kemudian ada beberapa ada berapa reviewer yang akan melakukan proses review, itu juga dijelaskan di website secara setransparan mungkin. Juga uh, Kate menyarankan untuk mengikuti COP guidance eh, tadi yang sudah di-share di slide dan itu sangat detail sekali mengenai guidance agar, agar proses peer review dapat berjalan secara eh, transparansi dan eh, berintegritas. Oke, okay, eh, we move to the next question. Eh, mohon maaf karena keterbatasan waktu mungkin tidak banyak eh, pertanyaan yang akan saya bacakan eh, tetapi eh, nanti akan dihubungi oleh panitia siapa saja yang akan uh, menjadi penanya uh, terbaik dan tercepat. 
Okay, the next question is um, from Salsabila Yunesa. She was asking how to um, add quality is there any um, somehow the courses in the PKP school or RGI Academy on this? So how to uh, create a quality and efficiency in the uh, review process? Kate, you want to take that question? Sure, sorry, Maria, your audio cut out a little bit for me, so I missed part of the question, but uh -huh. um, what I heard is they're asking about PKP school and if there are learning uh, materials for peer review? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was asking about how to create a quality and efficiency in the uh, review process in uh, open journal system. Mm, okay. It can be from um, the PKP school. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm happy to link to the resources that we do have. So the becoming a reviewer course is for, um, it's written for peer reviewers and there is a section on writing good reviews. So that's about sort of um, making sure that you're, what you're submitting is high quality as a reviewer. Um, I am trying to think if we have other resources in the documentation hub on peer review, but um, Patricia, I'm looking to you here. I don't think there's anything that specifically addresses the quality question. So I think I'd yeah be um, recommending the, the PKP school course. Okay. Uh, untuk um, Ibu Sal Sabila dari UNESA, ya, jadi bagaimana cara meningkatkan kualitas dan efisiensi dari proses review itu bisa dilihat di PKP school. Uh, terus kemudian uh, nanti bisa dicari di documentation hub. Tadi di, share terah, di slide terakhir yang sudah di-share oleh Kate uh, mengenai uh, how to bisa dilihat di situ. Nanti mungkin bisa di share juga di um, kolom chat. Oke, okay, uh, we have the last question. Wait a second, I'm trying to. Hmm. Ya, yeah. from Bis Bismo Adi Triwahyu uh, Faisal. Uh, he was asking, uh, he said that he, he came from uh, Islamic State University in Madura. Uh, he said idea, uh, idea for ideally how many rounds in uh, review process, how many review rounds should be, uh, how is the mechanism in other countries. Uh, is it uh, two two round or three round and what is the uh, criteria to choose the reviewer in each round i think kate uh, can take that question sure yeah it's a really interesting question so my understanding is this would be dependent on the individual paper that's been submitted and and the level of um, revision that it needs So um, it, an editor would be relying on the reviewer recommendations to see if it needs to go back through a second round of peer review after revisions have been done, or if the revisions will be enough to make it ready to publish. Um, so I, I don't think there is a standard for how many review rounds are needed. Um, I don't even necessarily think a, a one journal would have Um, an average number of rounds of review. I think it just depends entirely on the quality of the manuscript that's submitted. Um, as uh, you know, John said this in the beginning, and I think I, I said it too, that we uh, recommend that you have two to three reviewers for each submission, and you might need to invite more than that um, because some people will decline or will miss the deadline. So it's a good idea to invite, if you have enough reviewers, invite more than you need. So then um, I think this speaks to the, the question of quality as well. If you, um, the purpose of peer review is to help the author improve 
the manuscript, but they might find that some reviewers are more helpful in that way than others. So by having more than one reviewer, it's more likely you'll get some helpful um, feedback um, that the author can use to strengthen the paper. So um, if you have multiple reviewers, you might get um, some recommending that the that the submission go on for more review rounds after the initial one. And some reviewers might say, we can just get the uh, revisions made and then it can go on to be published. Um, so it would be up to the editor to take the advice of the reviewers um, and maybe what the majority of reviewers think or overall what they're hearing about the paper um, and then make a decision based on that. So I don't think that's maybe a very helpful answer because it's really contextual and it really depends on the um, the submission and the reviewer feedback. Um, so, and then Patricia just made a note in the chat that OJS doesn't have a limit. You can have as many review rounds as needed. Um, or sorry, Patricia, you're saying it, there's no limit on the number of reviewers that you can invite to a submission. Yes, so sorry. Yeah, yes, we would recommend inviting. Oh, you were answering, maybe responding to a different question. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so the number of review rounds um, would be dependent on the, the feedback you get from the reviewers and what the editor field is needed to get it ready for publication. Oke, okay, thank you so much, Kate. Jadi uh, untuk Pak Bismo Adi, uh, jawaban dari, uh, dari Kate adalah uh, tidak ada standar dalam review round, tapi sekali lagi itu semua tergantung dari kualitas naskahnya dan juga dari um, policy atau kebijakan dari um, jurnalnya. Jadi sarannya Kate adalah punya dua atau tiga reviewer. Kalau saran saya lebih baik mempunyai reviewer yang ganjil. Jadi kalau ada dua jawaban yang berbeda, satu ada dua kali atau tiga kali review round. Begitu sarannya dari Kate. Um, saya kira untuk sementara cukup itu saja. Terima kasih sekali lagi atas banyak sekali pertanyaan via kolom chat. Ini baru pertama kali saya mengadakan webinar dan banyak sekali pertanyaan. Tentu saja saya yakin bahwa um, mengenai peer review ini sangat krusial dan uh, semoga kita bisa um, mengakomodir semua jawabannya. Nanti saya coba kompilasi dari kolom chat dan uh, saya akan coba sampaikan ke Patricia dan Kate uh, Mungkin nanti akan dijawab via email yang akan dikirim bersamaan juga dengan uh, slides presentasinya. Uh, Kate and Patricia, I was just uh, told the participant that uh, I want to thank you for uh, so much, uh, so many, so many questions uh, in the chat. And uh, due to the limited time, I think we should compile the questions. And then if you have some time, maybe you can answer the questions. And then we send it uh, via email to the participants. Is it okay? Uh, Maria, I think that's a, that's a great idea. And I would like to thank everyone for asking your questions. It's really helpful to us to, to hear um, what you're working on and what your challenges are. Um, we can also use the information we compile to respond um, to help other users of, of our platform. So really appreciative that you took the time to ask us the questions. Baik, uh, thank you so much once again, Kate and uh, Patricia. We give a, we will give a big round of applause. Uh, kita beri tepuk tangan yang meriah untuk Kate dan juga Patricia atas sesi yang sangat menarik ini. Bapak dan Ibu, terima kasih sekali lagi atas pertanyaan-pertanyaannya. Door prize untuk pertanyaan ini akan kami berikan juga. Saya pilih secara random, bukan dari pertanyaannya, tapi dari namanya saja mungkin ya yang bisa saya pilih di sini sebentar oke okay. apakah masih dengar suara saya masih terdengar bu masih terdengar ini tiba-tiba komputer saya komputer oh. saya kayaknya ngelek nge Oke, okay. uh, teman-teman panitia mungkin dari Pak Ilham bisa dipilih lima orang terbaik 
atau lima orang penanya bukan terbaik lima orang penanya untuk uh, diberikan door prize pada siang hari ini Pak Ilham atau teman-teman dari panitia yang lain Iya Bu tadi yang disebutkan yang bertanya Pak Agus dari IN mudah-mudahan masih masih bergabung Pak Agus dari UIN, kemudian Pak Hendra, Pak Hendra masih bergabung Pak Hendra, Ibu Salsabila dari UNESA, Ibu Salsabila dari UNESA. Masih join? Beberapa sudah keluar nih. Ibu oh, Nah, ya. ya Ibu sampai lagi nih. Najla Asari. Bu Najla masih bergabung punya Bu Najla. Dan ya itu sudah baru empat bu ya? Baru empat, satu lagi pak? Ini panjang pertanyaannya ini. Iya baik. Heri Yanto, Her Heri Yanto. Baik. Ada Pak Heri baik. yang bertanya? Ada Pak. Mungkin... Ada. Oke okay, Pak Heri ada, siap. Baik, terima kasih banyak Pak Ilham. Bagi nama-nama yang tadi disebutkan oleh Pak Ilham, silakan menghubungi Panitia via kolom chat atau melalui admin RJI. Teman-teman Panitia mungkin bisa nanti disampaikan uh, nomor WA admin RJI. Uh, mohon juga kami mohon untuk segera menyalakan kameranya bagi nama-nama yang disebutkan tadi. Mohon dipin teman-teman Panitia untuk nama-nama yang disebutkan. Ada dari UNESA, ada dari UIN, dan yang terakhir tadi Pak Heri. Tolong dipin. Oke, Bu. Oke, sudah. Tolong dipin juga bersama dengan Kat dan Patricia. Juga Pak Arbain kalau masih bergabung. Bisa, Rai. Tolong Bisa. untuk... Bapak, Ibu. Ya, Bu. Siap. Ya, tolong untuk di screenshot. Yeah, we will have a we will have a picture taking session with our presenters and the door prize winners today, Kate and Patricia. So we kindly ask you to turn on your camera. Apa sudah, Mbak Ella? Sebentar, Bu, belum. Masih ada yang belum pin. Mohon yang terpilih dari price pernanya bisa raise untuk kami tan uh, eh. okay. Kalau tidak ada atau kalau sudah ada cukup yang sudah, ada dulu sudah. saja mungkin? Sudah ada semua, Bu. Sudah ada semua, baik. Termasuk Kate, Patricia, dan juga Pak Arbain? Oh, ya, sudah ada semua. Sudah. Oke, okay. baik. Sudah di screenshot, Mbak Ella? Uh, belum. Siap untuk saya screenshot. Oh, ya. Satu, dua, tiga. Oke, okay. yeah. sweet one. Oke, okay. oke. Okay. Terima kasih banyak, Mbak Ella. 
Bapak dan Ibu peserta webinar yang terhormat, tibalah kita di akhir acara. Semoga materi yang disampaikan pada webinar hari ini dapat berguna bagi para reviewer, editor, dan pengelola jurnal sehingga dapat meningkatkan kualitas publikasi ilmiah di institusinya masing-masing. Kami mohon maaf jika ada kekurangan baik dalam persiapan dan juga selama berlangsungnya acara dan terima kasih atas perhatiannya RJI berbagi giatkan publikasi. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you so much, Kate and Patricia. Thank you, Miss Patricia, Mr. Kate.